In this video, we're going to be talking about the force table lab. We'll be talking about how to analyze the situation and how to calculate for an unknown mass and angle. So a force table is basically a set of pulleys attached to the end of a table. And those have strings that are connected to a ring in the middle. And that string is um, placed over the pulley and then has a mass hanging from the end of it. Now, typically the objective is to learn about vectors, masses, forces, and be able to set the uh, force table in equilibrium so that this ring does not touch this pin in the middle, basically making all the forces balanced. Now, each of these um, strings over here has a force of tension, and that force of tension is the same as the force of gravity pulling down by those masses. The pulley is basically just there to redirect the force. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at example. The top of the force table would look something like this. It would show you all 360 degrees. So let's say, for example, we have a force. Angled at 100 degrees, and we have exactly 100 grams hanging off the end of that force table. And then the second mass, we'll say, is at 210 degrees. which also has a mass of 100 grams. So our goal is to figure out where to place a certain mass to even out um, both of these masses here. So basically what we wanna do is we wanna use these vectors and breaking it up into its X and Y components. Now you can do that a few different ways, um, but you're basically gonna to have to use um, sine and cosine. So anytime you take the hypotenuse of your triangle and multiply it by the cosine angle, you will typically get the X component, the horizontal component, and then for the sine of theta times the hypotenuse, you will get the Y component. Now, before we get started, uh, we wanna make sure we realize um, what vectors are gonna be considered positive and negative. Um, basically anything going towards the right is positive and going to the left is negative. If we're talking about in the X direction, horizontal components, and then in the Y direction, if something is going upward, it'll be considered positive. And then if it's going downward, it will be considered negative. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and redraw this triangle. And we have a hypotenuse that goes up like this. And because it goes to 100 degrees, um, that means that it's 10 degrees past the 90, and then there's an additional 80 right here. Then I'm gonna make a X component and then a Y component. And then we're gonna call this 80 degrees right here. Again, because we went 10 degrees past the 90 and there's additional 80 over here. So for our hypotenuse of the triangle, it is going to be 0.1 kilograms times 9.8, because if we convert grams to kilograms, we're gonna divide this by 1,000, which changes it to 0 0.1. And then we always do mg mass times 9.8 to get the force of these hanging masses right here. So we want all these to be mg, which is mass times 9.8, but we want that mass in kilograms. So again, we move the decimal place three places to the left, and that leaves us with 0 0.1. Um, we can do the same thing with the other triangle. We can draw in the hypotenuse and then 9.8 times 0.1 is just 0.98. So I already know this one is going to be 0.98 because it has the same mass of 100 grams. So I'm going to go ahead and skip a little step there. Now it's at 210 degrees, which is 30 degrees past the horizontal over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close off this triangle, do an X component and a Y component and then call this 30 degrees. Okay, so now what we wanna do is look at everything in terms of X and Y components. So let's go ahead and then take a look at our X components first. So for our X components, um, when we get this portion over here, we're gonna take this hypotenuse or the force, which is 0 0.98 Newtons times the cosine of 80 degrees and that's gonna give us 0 0.17 Newtons. 
Now we're going to do the same thing for the other one. We're going to take the hypotenuse of 0.98 newtons times now the cosine of 30 degrees. And that's going to give us 0 0.85 newtons. All right. So on the x side, so far we know that we have um, 0 0.17 newtons. That's pointing to the left. So we're going to call that negative because to the left is negative. And then we are going to add um, a 0 0.85 degrees. And again, that one is negative as well because it's pointing to the left and not the right. And then plus some kind of force in the x direction. And we want that to equal 0. So basically, if we add these two together, it becomes negative 1.02. Then we can add that to both sides. And then our force in the x direction is 1.02 newtons. Okay, so we're halfway there for solving for the force components. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the y components. So for the y components, um, we have 0 0.98 times the sine of 80 degrees now, which gives us 0 0.98. 97 newtons and then for the other side in green we have 0 0.98 newtons times the sine of 30 and that gives us 0 0.49 all right now if we're handling all of the y components we have 0 0.97 newtons which is going upwards so i'm going to leave that positive and then we have 0.49 newtons, which is going downwards. So we'll call that negative plus some kind of Y component that we want to balance out everything. Now, if we take positive 0.97 and subtract 0.49, we get 0 0.48. We subtract that from both sides. So then F of Y equals negative 0 0.48 newtons. All right, now we have our components for our final resultant force. Now what we're going to do is add these two up tip to tail. So I have positive 1.02. So that is to the right. So positive is this way, 1.02 newtons. And then we want to go ahead and add the Y component. So negative 0.48. So that means it's going downwards. And then our final answer is going to be the resultant vector, which is the combination of those two. So we're going to go ahead and use the Pythagorean theorem, which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we are eventually going to take the square root of 1.02 squared plus 0.48 squared. And then that's going to give us, which is going to give us 1.48. 1, 3 newtons for our final resultant force. Now, a couple things we want to do with that. Uh, remember, we took m times g to get the force. So this force equals mg. So that means 1.13 equals the mass times 9.8. So if we divide both sides by 9.8, then our mass comes out to be 0.115 kilograms. So now since we're moving in sort of the backwards direction of what we did, um, instead of dividing by a thousand, we're going to multiply by a thousand, which would mean that this mass is going to change to 115 grams as our final mass. So we know that we're going to have a mass of 115 grams and we just need to get the angle to place it at. So how we're going to do that is we're going to go ahead and find this angle right over here. So let me go ahead and make myself a little bit more room. We are going to take the inverse tangent okay, of this angle over here. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So the inverse tangent of 0 0.48 divided by 1.02 comes out to be 25.2 degrees. So we can take 360 minus 25.2, and that would give us a number of 334.8 degrees.
degrees as our final angle. So we're going to want to place it at 334.8. And we're going to want to hang 115 grams off the edge there. Um, and that would complete our force table so that our ring is in equilibrium. So to sum things up, you basically want to take out each of your triangles, find your X and Y components so that you can see what is the leftover force that needs to be accounted for in order to make the object have a net force of zero newtons in the X and Y direction. Put those two pieces together, use a Pythagorean theorem to find your resultant vector. And then from there, you can also find your final angle by using an inverse trig function. Inverse tangent usually works pretty well. And then you get your final angle and your final mass to hang on the force table. So I hope that was helpful to you. Thank you for watching and listening.